Thank you for joining me on this wool crepe ensemble project. Join me for future videos by clicking subscribe and the icon button and you will be notified of any future videos. Let's start with the planning. The idea was to make a long skirt based on my gray skirt that is a, just a little bit shorter, more appropriate for winter length and the snow. It's Good to wear, hopefully with spats. Spats are a future project. And the wool, which I have in my stash, is brown crepe. And I want it to go with two of my uh, winter vest type uh, outfits. And I needed something that was a little bit more sturdy for that. Measured the gray skirt and I discovered that the main body of the skirt is 38 inches and that does not count the hem or the waistband. I chose wool crepe from my stash and a gold spotted brocade uh, to start with. The bodice ended up being the brown crepe wool, green piping from my stash, gold spotted brocade from, for the center and the front. I wasn't sure if I was going to use buttons and I did end up using silk taffeta from my stash, but we'll get to that in the future. I followed the truly Victorian walking skirt pattern that has no pockets. The no pocket rationale is that I want to place a placket pocket at some point after I wear it for a while to see where I want it. This means I will put them in a better placement and be able to decorate and allow me to add tabs for lifting skirts. I've wanted to put tabs on my skirts for the winter wear for a while because I think that would be quite useful since we get quite a bit of slush and snow where I live. Okay, so this is the corset I've been wearing pretty regularly, I would say for the last year, I guess. Um, this is not a custom corset, this is an orchard corset and it's the smallest one I could find. <laughs> um, because I'm really short bodied and you can really see that I'm really squishy. <laughs> um, I'm fluffy and I'm really squishy. So I actually squish down really tight. Um, and this is not too tight for me. This is actually really comfortable. The only time it gets kind of uncomfortable is this back fat sometimes gets a little pinched um, and then it's not comfortable. But this is my daily and I scrunched down to 29 and a half, which probably means I'm about a 28 underneath, which is fine. Um, my natural waist when I wear stuff scrunches down to a 30 without the corset really easily. So this is one of my corset covers. And normally I wear a, um, chemise set or chemise underneath. Uh, the only reason I'm putting this on right now, and I need a safety pin because my button is burst. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm a little swollen today because I've been sick for the last week. And when I get sick, uh, I get really swollen and inflamed and everything just swells up. So like most women, you know, when everything swells up, nothing fits quite right. And for some reason, my boobs swell. Don't know why. So what I'm doing today is I am fitting a bodice. And I'm going to kind of walk you through how I do that. I'm using cam snaps this time. Um, and I realized just now that I put the snaps on backwards from what I've been doing with my buttons. Not sure why. <laughs> Might have been a little tired when I did this. I had a really bad ear infection and I've been really struggling with nausea and vertigo so apparently I'm seeing things backwards too lovely so I know that I want 
the front to stay centered. So I'm gonna pin it. So I know that the darts on this are supposed to be kind of here. So I'm gonna kind of pin and make it fit. I know that this has to be snug against the back or it won't look right. This might be one of those that I actually end up cutting it and creating a whole nother seam. I've done that a couple times. Just depends on the... It seems to depend on the fabric. I'm actually only going to pin one side thoroughly, you know, all the way up and down because I can make them match when I go back on the other side. And then they're even. But I need to address this. This is not right. The other thing that I'm going to do on this one is I might pad it out a little bit more in the upper bust so that it fills out a little bit more. I don't know. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I don't. Okay. And then I draw with chalk, even though I've pinned it. And I'm going to take this off and now play with it a little bit. Hey there. So another trick that's pretty handy is if you draw um, on your fabric and then you use a stitch like a big basting stitch on the fabric all along where you're going to pin when you're pinning it together there's texture on both sides and it helps you pin equally on both sides so i'm just gonna tentatively make sure that I have the same fit and you can see there's a there's a hunk of fabric I have to cut off but that fits really well um I've got stuff stuck to the inside of my bodice okay I'm gonna sew these together and then I'm gonna cut the excess fabric off and then I'll be back to show you what it looks like here I am just pressing open the dart seams that I have sewn and clipped. The dart actually ended up being kind of an S-curve dart, so there were a couple curves that I needed to clip to make that iron flat properly. I also recommend not doing what I did on this side, which was I clipped it all together instead of one side at a time, which is what I did on that one. And it does lay better. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, I know what I was thinking. I was thinking about something else, which is never a good idea. Pay attention to what you're doing. Don't do what I did. My mind's been really wandering. I mean, I was sick with an ear infection last week. So um, what do you do when you can't sew? Well, you think a lot about sewing. <laughs> And that's what this project is. This project is a, I have to make something before I go batshit crazy. Um, because I make all the time. I'm in the art room pretty much every day. And even if I make just a little thing that keeps my energy flowing, it's when I'm not making things that my life seems to fall apart or my energy falls apart. I don't know if that's a better way of saying it. 
I feel like my energy falls apart. I mean, maybe it doesn't, but it certainly feels like it. I zigzag this down because this is the arm's eye and I know the arm's eye is exactly right so I don't really want to mess with that so I'm going to zigzag those bits now I'm not going to do anything to these except maybe whip them down maybe well I usually do whip them down um, but I don't do anything fancy I kind of model my Victorian ancestors where I don't finish them um, you notice I don't really finish these either. I just zigzag them and then tack them down. Um, and that has served me just fine. So I'm going to do that on this one as well. Okay, so this is... This is the darts all sewn in. You can see them. They're bigger. One's bigger than the other. But they are even. They are the same on both sides. And that gives me a nice rounded seam here. I'm actually a little out of proportion like most people are. So the next thing I have to do is I have to um, put the marks on for the waist tape. Did I put, I snapped it uneven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay. So I know that I want my waist tape to the waist. Okay, so to make your waist tape, what I like to do is find my waist with my piece of string. So you use the mirror to help you. And once it's all marked, you can put your waist tape on. And I usually put my waist tape on before I put my boning. But before I get too enthusiastic about my waist tape, I need to finish my sleeves and um, do all that. So I'll be back. I forgot to film any of the sleeves. I know the washer's going in the background, but bear with me. So this is a huge chunk of silk taffeta and I really don't want to cut into that if I can piece what I need out of this. I need to create the binding that goes along the bottom of my bodice that's over there. And I'm going to do that with pieces of scrap silk. And silk taffeta is pretty forgiving. So I may have to do like little strips, but I'm going to do that. Wrenching for the decoration for the sleeve cuff. And this same wrenching technique I used for both the front and the back decoration of the bodice. So what I've done is I've run a single line of stitching down the center of a one inch strip of taffeta that is pinked. And it's back stitched on one end and it's clipped in my little bird there. And I am pulling on the bobbin side of the thread and I'm just slowly wrenching up. And then when I get to the bottom of that strip, I'm taking the two pieces of thread from the top and the bottom and I'm tying a knot. And this first strip is what determines the length of all of them, which is basically half of the cuff width.
I did this five times because one of the strips was a little bit squidgy on one end and I wanted to make sure I had enough. And then when I got done with that, I pinned it to the cuff in at the very edge so it looks like it's peeking out and it also allows that yellow brocade to show on the cuff.